Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Pauling Fu. In this video, I will review basic statistics. Topic include uh, quantitative data, normal distributions, sampling distributions of sampling mean, and a hypothesis test. Um, so I'm going to do a um, question for analyzing quantitative data, okay? So this data is about irrelevant speech effect. Uh, basically, they have data for 71 subjects. And the question asks you to construct relative frequency histogram for the data, okay? So this is the data. So based on this data, how do you create a relative frequency histogram, okay, using the class weights, class interval, negative 45, negative 15, okay. So that uh, class intervals is called bin in Excel. So I'm going to type in bin. It start with a negative, okay, maybe I'll move over here so that you can see the complete question. I will also move here, move this over here. Okay, great. So uh, interval start with negative, oops. Negative 45 not here. Negative 45 and then negative 15, okay, etc. Once you enter the first two numbers, you can select these two numbers, use fair handle, copy down until you see number 255. 255. So this is your bin, okay, and then you can use create a histogram, okay. histogram, I'll try to adjust my windows here. So you go to data and then quick data analysis. If you do not have data uh, analysis, you go here. If you are using PC file options, file options, And then uh, fire options, add-ins, quick add-ins. And then you select analysis tool pack and make sure Excel add-ins is selected, then you click go button. After this procedure, you will see data analysis on your Excel if you are using PC. If you are using Mac, you go on the top, you go to insert add-ins. Okay, so this is a Excel add-in. I will show to you, just close this one so that you have data analysis. And now, our quick data analysis, histogram, quick OK button. Uh, input range is from A2 to A272. Bin range is from C2 to C12, that's correct. I will put output in here, and I will include chart output. So make sure you select the correct parameters, okay? Uh, and then you click OK button. So now you have this graph. Okay, histogram. So 
So we completed question A, create relative free, the histogram, okay, histogram using those beams. Uh, B, from the histogram, estimate proportion of subject who had values between 75 and 105. These are, there are many ways to do it. One way you count original data. This is original data. How many data between 75 and 105? Okay. Uh, you can use count if to do it. Um, so I'm going to use count if. And then I'm going to use graph to estimate. Okay. So first, uh, I want to count how many greater than 75. Then I count how many greater than 105. Uh, and then I do subtraction. Okay. So I will count. Count if. I will count from A2, A2 to A72. That is the data range. The criteria, if they are greater than 75, I count. Okay, this is uh, equal to C-O-U-N-T. I miss letter T, count if. Okay, so we have 30 greater than 75. And then you use count if. It is range from A2 to A72. Oops. Criteria greater than 105. Then, so 17 greater than 105. And then the difference between these two is how many between 75 and 105. So you just do the subtraction, this number minus this number. You get 13, okay? And we now sample size is 72, not 71, because uh, the first row is hiding, okay? There are 71 data, 71 data. So uh, the answer for question two, okay? Uh, estimate the proportion between 75 and 105. So it is uh, 13 over 71, so 18%. Okay, that is uh, actually accurate ca calculation. And how do you estimate from this histogram? So from this histogram, you locate 105, it is here. Okay, so this 100 of uh, from here to here, it is roughly, maybe I'll copy this to one note so that I can make annotation. Okay, so I'm going to uh, control C. I'm just going to copy. And then I'll go to my one note, control V. Okay, now I can make a notation. So how do you estimate without accurate calculation? So from 75 to 105, you look at this number here. Okay, you exhaust to here. So estimate it is uh, maybe 13, 12 or 14, it is here. Okay, that's how you make estimation. Okay, so this number maybe is 13. And then you use 13 over sample size 71, you get 18%. This is the estimation. Okay, from the graph. All right, so this is a, a describing quantitative data. Okay. Uh, section 1.4. Uh, section 1.5 is about uh, describe quantitative data numerically. So basically, it is a mean, standard deviation, etc. Okay. So I'm going to go page 24 to do some questions for section 1.5 page number 
24 exercise Um, so I'm going to do this question here. Question 1.26. Shift graves in ancient Greece. Archaeologists have discovered a rise in shift graves during the Middle Hellenic period in ancient Greece. Shift graves are named for the beautifully decorated sword shifts that are buried along with the bodies. An analysis of shift graves was carried out and published in the American Journal of Archaeology. The table below gives the number of shifts buried at each of 13 recently discovered uh, gravity sites. Okay. So these are the data. Okay. Uh, the question asks you calculate the mean of the sample data. Okay. Uh, and then calculate the variance standard deviation of sample data. Use the results of part A and B to form an interval that capture at least 75% of the sample measurements. Okay, interpret the interval. Okay. So basically you are asked to calculate the mean and standard deviation. So I'm just going to copy this data, control C into Excel to see if I can and I use I could get the data from data file just try a simple way yes I can just go and copy and paste okay this is the data so your task is to calculate what is the mean okay. for the mean you type in average average and then you highlight this number press enter so this number is the mean, okay. okay. And then you are asked to calculate the variance, okay. Variance. So you type in equal, type in equal um, AAR is variance, dot P means population. Uh, dot s means sample. We consider this data is sample. Okay, and then you select this one. So that is the variance. Uh, variance, and then you are asked to calculate the standard deviation. Standard deviation. So type in equal. Equal. S T D E V dot. Again, this is sample, and then you select the data. This is the standard deviation. Okay. So we calculated part A, part B, and part C, part C. Um, use results from part A and B to form interval that captures at least 75% of sample measurement. Okay. Uh, so this part, I'm going to do it on one note here. Oops. Just just one screen here. So we may use the chop shop theorem. Chop shop theorem said at least seventy five percent at least 75% will win then two standard deviation. That is chop shots, okay, standard deviation. So we are going to use mean, okay, plus minus two times standard deviation, okay. Uh, we already know what is the mean. Mean is our calculation result 3.231. Mean is 
3 to 1 we just get in Excel and standard deviation standard deviation we get 2.35 2.35 one okay so plug in mean plug in standard deviation and this formula will give you the interval interval lower bound and upper bound so lower bound would be negative 1.417 and upper bound is 7.933 Okay, so this is a um, just review of uh, mean standard deviation and uh, two standard most data we are within two standard deviation. Okay, so next I'm going to go section 1.6. Section 1.6, the normal probability distribution on page 29. Going to Type in the page number. Um, I have to make the font smaller so that I can type in the page. Oh, it's here, page number. So 29. normal probability distribution. So we are going to do question 1.33. Okay. Uh, use table to find each of the following for normal probability distribution, probability. So a variable Z is between negative one and positive one. What is that probability? What is that probability? Okay, I'm going to use two method. One, use table. Two, using Excel. Okay, so first, uh, we are going to explain how this table works. Table one. Okay, so I'll go to the table. Tables. Uh, table one, normal curve. Uh, I'm going to copy this table and then I can make a notation. Okay. Copy this table to one in my one note. Maybe I will add a page. This page is the tables. Okay. So this is the normal table. So the way this table works is pay attention to the shaded area the shaded area, okay? Um, so if this Z value is equal to one, suppose this Z value equal to one, the question is what is the shaded area? So how do you find out? You go to Z, see this is Z value one, is this 0 0.1 or one? Zero point one, this is 0 0.1. So I need the more content here. This is 0 0.1. So I need to scroll down Yeah, here. I have one, okay. So, but then I don't, I don't see the hiding. I don't see the hiding. Okay, I will. So where did I end? I end with 0 0.4. So I have to zero point four. I get zero point four. Okay, I will copy this one. Two. 
on my why is my one note? Haha, <laughs> my one note disappeared. I have to reopen it. Reopen my one note. Long office. One note. All right, it's opened. Right, it's not general. No, it then I will paste. And then I will make the bigger. Okay. So the question asks you, my question if 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 this z value equal to one. If this z equal to one, z value equal to one, how do you get the area in the shaded area based on this table? So first, you locate where is the z value equal to one in this table. So it is here. It is here. Okay. Uh, and then one is the same as one point one. Or uh, one point zero zero. Okay, the first digit, the first digit, it is refer to here, the first digit, and the second digit. You have to locate in here. This is the second digit. Refer to, so the intersection part of. Uh, this one, okay, this row with this one here. So if you draw a line, if you draw a line down, draw a line down, the insertion point, the intersection point is the area in the shaded area. So the answer is 0 0.3413, okay. That is the answer. When z equal to one, what is the area under the shaded area? The answer is zero point three one three four one three. Okay, this area. So now I give you another example. Suppose this z value is equal to one point two five. This z value equal to. I will use different color to illustrate. This z value equal to 1.25. Okay. The question is, what is this shaded area here? What is the shaded area? The answer is locate 1.2 on the first column. Where is 1.2? Here. 1.2 is here. Step two, locate the second digit is 0 0.05 here, the second digit. And then the insertion point, draw a line here. Draw a line. Draw a line. Okay. The intersection part, this number is the answer. When you have z value, z equal to 1.25, the area is 0 0.3944, 3944, okay? So once you understand this basic, return back to our question. Our question asks you, what is the probability z smaller than one greater than negative one. That is the question, okay? Uh, because of the symmetry of a bell-shaped curve, okay, the probability from negative one to positive one is, uh, this is zero, is this area times two because of the symmetry, okay? So I just need to find what is this area between zero and one times two 
is the answer for this one. Okay, so I already did that. When you have z equal to one, what is this shaded area? The answer is here, 0 0.3413. Okay, and you have to times two because it is from negative one to one. So two times 0 0.3413. Okay. And this answer would be 0 0.6826. Okay, so this is a method one, use the table. Method two, use Excel. Okay. Um, the Excel to find the probability. Um, I'm going to show you the original question. The original question is on page 20, 29. Okay. See, this is question, okay? Maybe I want to copy this question so that I can make a notation. Okay, I'll copy this question to here. One, two, one. Increase the font size. Okay, so this one you can use Excel to do it. Probability between negative one and the positive one. Okay, uh, so I'm going to uh, maybe use this cell. Okay, so it is a uh, equal to find the probability. The function in Excel is norm, normal distribution dot DIST, opening bracket, okay. And then you need uh, X, okay, you need X. Uh, but before I use Excel, I need to play. The Excel is based on the Excel to find the Z value in Excel. It is based on the area to the left of Z value. So if Z value is here, the result you get from Excel is the area to the left of Z value. Okay. So now our question is to find from negative one to one. So the diagram would be like this. So this is negative one and this is a positive one, okay? So how do I get this shaded area? That is the question. When you use Excel, you do this. You use this area minus this Z value here. So the red area minus the blue area, you get the area in the middle here you get this area, okay? So that is uh, the way I use Excel, okay? So first, maybe I will do two steps in Excel. I will do two steps in Excel. Step one, step one, found what is the area to the left of one. What is this area? That is the step one. What is the area to the left of one, z equal to one? Okay, that is step one. And then step, okay, I'll do step one in Excel first. 
So it would be, I will put the result, I oh, don't need, okay. I will put the result here. So equal norm dot dist opening bracket x is one mean is zero. When you have a standard normal distribution, mean is zero, standard deviation is one, okay? And it is uh, accumulative. So one, okay? You use Excel, do this one. So I get zero point eight four one three four five. Okay, so I'll copy this formula to here, just as a reference. Okay, so this result would give me this number. Okay, 0 0.84. Okay, this number, that is step one. And step two, I need to find out, I will put step two here, what is the area to the left of z equal to negative one? What is this area? Okay. So I just modified the formula from step one, I get step two. Uh, maybe I'll redo it. So norm dot dist. This time x equal to negative one, mean is zero for standard normal distribution. Uh, standard deviation is one for standard normal distribution. So accumulative, yes. So I get this number, okay. So that is step two. I get area to the left of a negative one. And then use the area to the left of one minus the area to the left of negative one. You get between one, between negative one and the positive one. Okay, so do subtractions. So this number minus this number, and you get this one. See, same result as we get from the table. Okay, same result as we get from the table. Okay. So that is the Excel method, Excel method. So I'm just going to move this a little bit here, and undo it. Okay. All right, so this is this question. So if you can do question A, you can do question B, you can do question C, D. They are exactly the same question. Just change number one to 1.96 to 1.645. Okay. Um, so this is uh, how do you find normal probability? In section 1.6, okay. So next I will do some questions from 1. 1.8. on page 40. Okay. On page 40. On page 40. Exercise. So I'm going to do this exercise. Okay. Uh, 1.41. Yeah, so I'm going to copy this into one note so that I can make a notation. Again, this is on page 40. 40. So the question asks you to simulate sampling distribution. Okay. Um, there are 50 random samples of random digit. And this data you can get from data files. 
So I'm going to use Excel to pull out that data file. Oh, um, first. So I'm going to to click file open. File open, which is uh, in this PC. I put it here. So under the C drive, Ryerson over to exercise. The data file name is, what is the data file name? I have to, EX1-41, okay, EX, so starting with E, A, B, C, D, EX, okay, this is the data file, so I will open. Okay, this is the data. So now I'm going to save this as Excel file because it is the CST file. So save as this PC. Save as this PC. And then I will go to this folder. Um, Ryerson over to my. So the file name is our art my last name to distinguish with original file name and I will save it as Excel file. Okay, so this is the data file the question referred to. So I'm going to maybe close this one. Uh, maybe save, maybe not save. Okay. All right, so read question. Um, so this is the data. I have this data. Question A, and this data has uh, those samples, okay? So how many of them? So 50, 50 rows, because the first row is heading. There are 50 rows for the data. And then you have uh, uh, those columns, okay? Uh, this one is uh, 50 random samples of uh, random digits. Okay, random digits. Where probability corresponding to the values are given by the formula. Each sample contains six measurements. So sample one has a six measurement. Sample two has a six measurement. Okay, each measurement is random number between zero and nine. Okay. So question A, question A, use 300 random digits. Why 300? You have 50 rows. Each row, you have uh, six digits, random digit. So 50 times six equal to 300. Okay, so Question A, use 300 random digits. Construct a relative frequency distribution for this data. Um, okay, so question A. Okay. Uh, construct a relative frequency distribution. Okay, so how do I construct relative frequency distribution. So I am going to type in the heading. So the possible value, remember this experiment is a random digit. So the digit could be one, could be zero, could be one, until nine. Those are the random digit. Okay. And my task here is to count how many zeros in those random numbers. Those are random digits. How many zeros you need to count? Okay, so how do I count? So you do this, equal K, 
count if opening bracket range is from here to here. You want to count how many zero here. So use Excel count if. Okay, so this is the criteria. And this one, I need to press F4 to change to absolute cell reference because later on, I need to count how many one, how many two, okay? So next one is the comma. And then you need to criteria is one. How many one in this data range? That is my question. So I get 26. Next, I will ask how many one in this data range? How many two in this data range? You do not need to retype in the formula. You just need to copy the down the formula, use fill handle. That's the reason when I uh, create the first formula. See, I use absolute cell reference as the data range. Okay. So anyway, I counted uh, those frequencies for each digit. That's what, if you add, add all of this, it should come up with how many? 300. Because total I have 300 number there. 26 of them are zero, 30 are one, 24 are two, etc. Okay, so I did that. After, this is the frequency, okay. Next, you do the relative, relative frequency. Okay. Relative frequency means use the frequency divided by the total number. Again, total number is the absolute cell reference. I press F4 button because everybody will divide by 300. Okay, and then I'll copy down the other data. So those are the frequency. Maybe I will format the data so that it looks nice. Okay, keep four digits. Okay. So that is a uh, question A construct frequency distribution and the relative frequency distribution. So this is the frequency distribution. This is the relative frequency distribution. Okay. So I completed question A and the question B calculate the mean of the 300 digits and also uh, give accurate estimate of mu, mu represent population mean. Okay, so but first I want to, so this is the question answer for A, now I will do B. Question B, calculate the mean Okay, of those 300 numbers. So you just type in M-E-A-N mean, M-E-A-N mean, and then select this data range, select all those 300 numbers. Okay, closing bracket. Uh, oh, I should type in average, sorry, equal AVER, AGE average, average of these numbers. Okay. So the average is a 4.69. Okay. Uh, if you do the average of all the nine digits, so if you do the average of all these nine digits, you get 4.5. And this one is the sample mean is 4.68. So the sample mean close to population mean. Okay, close to population mean. So that is the question B. Okay. So question C ask you to calculate S square means variance for 300 digit. So variance. That is part C. Variance equal to VAR dot S means sample. 
Okay, and then you select this data. Okay, oops. So you get this variance. Okay, and this is for sample. How do you get variance for population? See, those. this is your population. This is all the digits. Okay, so let's calculate the variance for this population. I will put result maybe here. Okay, equal var dot p. p means population. I want to calculate the variance of this. Oops, the variance. Oh, no, I have to redo it. So equal var dot p population. The variance. So two point or 8.25. So as you can see, the variance for sample close to the variance for uh, population. Okay. Um, so that is a question B. Okay. And question C asks you to calculate the mean, y bar means mean, mean for each 50 samples. Okay. Calculate mean for 50 samples. Uh, so where do I calculate the mean for 50 samples? I'll type in the head mean for 50 samples. So I'll put the result here, so equal to AVER AG average. So you want to do average of sample one. Okay, that is question C. And then do the average for sample two until sample 50. Okay, so those are the average for all the samples. Okay, so after that, Construct a relative frequency distribution with the sample means. Relative frequency distributions. So actually, I'm going to relative frequency distribution. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm going to create a histogram to simulate that one. So go to data. Data analysis histogram, click OK, and input data range. Bin range, I will not have the bin range, the computer. So input range will be here. This is the histogram I want to create. Okay. And the uh, output, I will put the output in cell, maybe here. This is my output. Input range, output range. Click OK button. Okay. So this is the histogram. Okay. Imagine I have uh, 550 samples. Imagine if I have 1,000 samples, this histogram will be Roughly normally distributed means it is a bell shaped symmetry. Bell shaped symmetry. Okay. And if you calculate the average of this, remember I will highlight this one here. Remember this column here. Column L is the average for each sample. So for example, 4.83 is the average for sample one. Next one is the average for sample two. Now I want to do the average of average. I want to do the average of this number. What is the average of column L? Okay, so that is uh, what I'm going to do here. So A V E R A G E the average of average column L each number in column L is an average. I want to do the average of these averages. So it would give me 
See, this number very close to population average here. This is the population average. So that's why the central limit theory said the sampling distribution of sampling mean equal to population mean when you have a large number of samples. So this number should be equal to this number, not exactly equal, very close to this number. Okay. So I'm going to write down this very important central link distribution of central mean. Okay. So that is very important. Central limit theorem has two components. One, okay, sampling distribution. Remember, we have many mean. We have uh, sample one mean, sample two mean, sample 50 mean. We have many mean. Take the average of those, okay, sampling distribution of sample mean equal to population mean. And the sampling distribution, okay, the standard deviation of sampling distribution equal to population standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. Square root of sample size. Okay. So that is the famous important central limit theorem equal to these two formulas. So that is uh, session 1.8. So I will continue this review in next session for hypothesis test. Okay, so next session I'll do uh, maybe let me see. Yeah, hypothesis test. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to. Um, where is the end? Oops, where is my session? No. Um, try to, okay, this, try to end this session. So, Paul, you here, pause, stop here. Stop share and uh, stop recording. Stop recording.